Just a quick notice before the video starts. Um, thank you everyone for the nice reception I got for my last video bashing pre-CU. Not that I mean to bash, bash pre-CU, but you know, critiquing it, criticizing it. Um, and then the other thing is uh, I've teamed up with Scribe Productions for music. So I will have all royalty free uh, music on my channel and it'll be unique. So um, if you are, if you like the music you hear, you can go check him out at Scribe Productions. I'll link to his channel and the video for the song that I'm using in this video down below in the description. Have a nice day. Peace. What's up, everyone? Gospel here, again to talk about SWG pre-CU combat and its problems. A lot of you liked my last video talking about the terrible balance of pre-CU, but this time around, I'm going to focus on gameplay instead of balance, which is arguably the bigger problem with pre-CU. Sometimes the two are intertwined, but not always. There could be balance with bad gameplay, and good gameplay with bad balance. For some of these complaints, I may offer ideas or solutions, and I may not. A lot of this is from a PvPer's perspective, so obviously I am 100% correct and only my opinion matters. But some of it will also be applicable to PvE, because in SWG, if you want to PvP, you have to PvE. There is no arena queue to get gear from. All great gear flows from PvE at the end of the day. That isn't a criticism, I like it being that way. So on to my first point, the ham bars. HAM stands for Health, Action, and Mind. As most of you watching this already know, in pre-CU, if any of these bars hit zero, you're incapacitated and or dead. And you also already know, Mind is unhealable by most people, with the exception of combat medics and Jedi. For PvE, this isn't much of a big deal because NPCs are like players operated by babies. They never heal themselves, so attacking whatever HAM bar you want is fine. But for PvP, the DPS tends to focus on mind unless dots take someone really low on action or health. This makes for super boring gameplay. All it takes is looking at pretty much any pre-CU PvP video and you will see a train of people head hitting and headshotting a single target till they die. And if they're too good at using line of sight to avoid damage, targets will switch and they'll train onto someone else. Knockdowns are sometimes effective, but often Jedi healers will keep people up, so essentially, you're just burning the healer's force bar as fast as possible. This leads to some really boring combat, and sometimes stalemates depending on compositions of the teams. If both teams have quite a few Jedi healers, you can expect a very long battle ahead of you. The solution isn't for players to be able to heal their own mind like Jedi can, I don't think. I think a better system would be to somehow set people up for kills either through an offensive buff that lets you burst people down, to which the counterplay would be for healers to be on their game, or to have it so that certain debuffs are applied when you lower people's ham bars to certain percentages. For example, if action is focused and maybe hits 25 or 30% of its full value, the player gets a temporary movement speed debuff that can't be cured, even if their action is healed to full right afterwards. This would help immensely, as a slow, moving, or totally stationary target is usually dead meat. I don't know what kind of debuffs could be applied for lowering health or mind, but perhaps there could be debuff tiers at certain percentage points, so a tier 1 debuff at 75%, tier 2 at 50%, and tier 3 at 25%. I think implementing something like this could make for way more interesting combat and definitely make players rethink strategies for taking down other players. Speaking of strategies, Let's talk about the mindlessness of the combat queue. One thing that really bugs me about pre-CU is the fact that we just spam our most powerful attack repeatedly till someone dies, like an unhinged wife taking her cheating husband's life into her own hands. Some classes, like Fencer and Pikeman, will get put on AoE duty to spam dots, the blind state, and knockdowns. But other than that, it's mostly just spam headshot, head hit, dervish 2, strafe shot 2, and so on and so forth. There isn't any real thought into DPSing in pre-CU, which makes for a really low skill ceiling and unfortunately, unfortunately makes a lot of the PvP gear based. With the way damage reduction is, I don't see people not spamming their most powerful abilities all the time, but that isn't really an excuse. The game needs to be changed to fix this mindless combat. The lack of viable abilities to use in both PvE and PvP is just mind-numbingly boring. This is something I think the CU got right, which brings me to my next point, lack of class defining abilities. People might say, there are plenty of class defining abilities, Pistolier can hit health, Rifleman mind, and Carboneer action. 
And I would say, yeah, but they're all just doing the same thing, but to different handbars. In the combat upgrade, Pistolier had their stopping shot changed to a root. Carboneer had slows. Rifleman did big damage. Swordsman had armor break. Pikeman had war cry and intimidate. TK had innate armor and were very tanky with center of being, and the list goes on. Classes actually felt good to mix and match, as every combat class had something special about it, and people diversified their templates to pick up active abilities instead of just passives like they do in pre-CU. It made for way more interesting gameplay, and I believe it added to the uniqueness of each character. If something similar could be done with pre-CU, that'd be great. Speaking of roots and slows, that reminds me. Pre-CU has a significant lack of crowd control, and no, I don't mean tear gassing protesters. Crowd control is essentially some form of control over your opponents. Let me throw out and define a few terms before I continue on. Snare is a reduction in movement speed. Root is a total reduction in movement speed to where the target cannot move. Silence is a debuff that disables the target's ability to use abilities. Stun is a root that also silences. Mesmerize, or as some call it, mez, is a stun that breaks on damage. Fear is a stun or mez, depending on the game you're playing, that causes the target to run away or run around randomly. And disarm, which removes the target's weapon. They may still be able to heal and use some defensive abilities, but they can't attack. In pre-CU SWG, we only have a couple of these. Panic Shot from Smuggler and War Cry from Brawler are both silences that break on damage. Knockdown is essentially a sort of stun that you can immediately get up from if you're not dizzy, but you will be silenced for 5 seconds from the initial knockdown, and if you stay knocked down, you will take 50% more damage while on your back. This is very limiting, and another thing I believe the CU got right. Although the CU didn't have fear, stun, or disarm, there was still a pretty decent spread and use of CC across the classes. I believe this is something pre-CU SWG could implement with no problems. Of course, there would need to be cooldown timers on how often someone could be CC'd, just like Knockdown has a 30 second timer, but it would work well and be a massive improvement over what is available now. Quick side note, I think Dizzy should be nerfed in some way, Maybe have it so the next knockdown on a target is 5 seconds long with no chance to get up, and it goes away after that. Just an idea. Alright folks, let's assume for a bit that pre-CU has no ADKs. Glorious, right? Totally amazing. Things break, people buy new things, the economy is moving and grooving, and nobody has OP weapons forever. Well, this is sort of a problem here. And don't get me wrong, I'm not complaining about the eventual removal of anti-decay kits. Good riddance as far as I'm concerned. What I am concerned about though, is a lack of consistency in gear. There will come eras where someone wreaks havoc upon thine enemies, because this chosen individual happened to loot some really awesome weapon and or amazing weapon components. This makes player strength inconsistent. If you don't get lucky with loot, you will be weaker. As a player, this feels really bad, and overall I think is unhealthy for the game. I'm not sure exactly what the solution is for this. I know getting rid of exceptionals and legendaries is a good idea, but maybe there could be lootable schematics for weapons that can be crafted to higher stats than normal. This would make it so that it's consistent with regular resources instead of relying on super duper uber components. It's something to think about because essentially you're losing progression of your character and that's not good gameplay. That's really bad and should be avoided. Speaking of loot, PvE has a loot problem. Mostly there isn't enough to go around for everyone. In more modern MMOs, a lot of them have updated PvE so that two ungrouped players attacking the same mob both get their own individual loot, which some might argue is kind of Care Bearish and this could present a problem if implemented into SWG with certain things dropping in value massively. But there is one aspect that really sucks. Certain mobs, like the Ackley, can be monopolized. The reason this sucks currently is due to the Ackley bones making swordsmen viable for PvP. I don't know what can be done about this besides having Ackleys and other such mobs spawn randomly throughout the world, so I'm not going to get too much into it. I know the CU had instances for NK Necrosis and other such areas, but I'm not sure this would jive well with the SWG community. 
by the way, what you're seeing on screen is like 40 to 60 players uh, all camped in the bo bottom of the Acklay uh, uh, vying for the monopoly of the Acklay loot. So good luck if you're trying to get any of that. My next issue might seem nitpicky to some, but I think a lot of others will agree. Having to be buffed by a doctor and entertainer to do any sort of combat in the game absolutely sucks. Assuming you don't log right into a cantina with buffers available, having to take 10 to 15 minutes to get ready to do anything once you log in sucks majorly. As a PvPer, I can't count the amount of times a friend or guildie would tell me they're getting ganked somewhere, but there was nothing I could do about it 90% of the time because it just takes too long to get buffed and get going. What makes it even worse is at the end of this buff session, you absolutely have to go back and rebuff, ruining the flow of whatever you were doing and taking even more time than it might have to get buffed in the first place. In my last video, I talked about nerfing buffs, but maybe a buff to ham might work well too. Mmm, you smell that? That's the smell of a Jedi in fear. You know why? Because my next issue is with FRS. FRS is a bad system. People fight club to get to the higher ranks, but that's not even my problem. Assuming it worked right and requirements to get high up in the system didn't force you to abandon your family, friends, job, and neglect your dog, it would still be a bad system. The problem is that if one side wins a few fights, they start getting a power boost and the other side doesn't. This just makes the winning side stronger while the other side remains weak. It totally kills PvP. I know because this is what happened on a couple private servers my friends and I played on. Also, Jedi as an alpha class is a bad idea, for the most part anyway. I know in my last video I said Jedi aren't an alpha class, and that is still true as pre-CU is today, but we can't just have Jedi be this six month grind for a weak class. It's, it's like working out your lower body to become a paraplegic. It can't really be alpha either. Well, not without some major downside. I know pre-published 9 Jedi had permadeath, but that seems kind of extreme to me. Perhaps Jedi should have some sort of life system like Mario or Sonic. Maybe Jedi get one or two lives a week, and if you lose them, you can't play your Jedi till the next week's life reset. And sorry Jedi, there are no rollover minutes. I know I just said FRS is a bad system, but there does need to be some sort of reward for PvP. Because, without ADKs, it costs you to PvP, regardless if you win or lose. A GCW system that lets players rank up, but not lose progress if they die in PvP, could offer some sort of reward. Just like in the NGE, you were allowed to keep your progress if you got a kill, so you still make some progress if you get a few kills in a battle, but don't win the battle itself. I'm not really sure what players could get from such a GCW system. This is actually sort of my solution to FRS as well, but maybe without a cap on how many players can achieve the higher ranks. The balance would need to be discussed. And finally, my last gripe, Squad Leader. This is the dumbest thing in the current version of PreCU. The way Squad Leader works is that all their buffs are spammable and their range is the entire planet they're on. This leads to people having permanent burst run, instant dizzy and stun clears every couple seconds, dramatically increased range and melee defense, and increased accuracy. In fact, Squad Leaders are basically buff bots just like entertainers and doctors, but worse because PvP players won't leave the planet their Squad Leader is on. I actually don't mind their abilities being spammable, but their range should probably be limited to 128 meters, and their abilities should have a high cost to use, regardless of their ham substats. It should be a class that has to be actively played. Notice a lot of these have to do with combat. That's because, I believe, SWG's main problem has been combat over its entire lifespan. That's why we got that lovely combat upgrade I love so much. The only other things I would want to see added back to the game is the overt slash covert system with temporary enemy flags and the city warn function. Because I have a right to defend my property and ain't no yellow belly SOE developer gonna tell me otherwise, you hear me? If you enjoyed the content, please like, subscribe, and also I'm curious as to what people's thoughts are, so leave a comment if you have anything to add. Anyways, I'll catch y'all next time. Thanks for watching. Peace!